In this video, we're going to continue examining our vertical parabolas. We will be focused on primarily how to graph the vertical parabolas and how to identify all the components, the vertex, the focus, the length of the lattice, and the directrix. So I have my standard form, y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And we're going to use that to assist us with graphing each parabola. So on these examples, I have all of our formulas already written out next to us so we can see exactly what we're doing. First thing you want to look at is, is the equation in standard form? So if I take a look, y equals, I do have an a value, my x minus h squared plus k. So it is in my standard form already. Now what I do is identify my a value, which is 1 eighth, my h value, which is 3, and my k value, which is negative 4. Those values allow me to go find the vertex, the focus, the lattice, and the directrix. My vertex is the coordinate h, k. So that's the coordinate 3, negative 4. So let's plot that first. 1, 2, 3, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4. And so this is my vertex. Now when you're graphing, you know, this is going to be opening up. I'm going to put a V next to this so I know it's my vertex. And then I'm going to do my focus. Since A is positive, it's opening up. So remember, that means your focus is above the vertex and your directrix is below the vertex. Now, I find both of these at the same time. And the way I do that is I notice one's adding 1 over 4A and one's subtracting 1 over 4A. So I'm going to find that value first. One over 4a. Well, a is 1 eighth. So you have 1 over 1 eighth times 4. So I have my 1, I have my 4 times the 1 eighth. Well, 4 times 1 eighth is 1 half. So you have 1 over 1 half, which the 2 flips up to give you 2. So 1 over 4a is 2. So when I'm finding my focus, I'm going to have my h value, which is 3, comma, the k, which is negative 4, plus 2. Well, negative 4 plus 2 is a negative 2. So your focus is located at the coordinate 3, negative 2. So 3, negative 2, and that is my focus. And what I do is I put an f here. So I know it's my focus. So your directrix is y equals your k value, which is negative 2, minus the 1 over 4a, so which is 2. So I have negative 2 minus 2. So y equals negative 4. And if you think about it, y equals negative 4 is a horizontal line. So let me just graph my dashed horizontal line. And there is my directrix for it. And one way to check and see, let's change the color of it so we can see, and this is our directrix. Make sure it's the right value for the directrix is check to see if the distance between the vertex and the directrix is the same as the distance from the vertex to the focus. And they're both two units away, and it should be that way. And so that gives us our focus, our directrix. Now we're going to use the lattice to find the length of it. To, so we can find two points on our parabola. So the lattice is found by doing the absolute value of 1 over a. So I have the absolute value of 1 over my a value is 1 eighth, which 1 over 1 eighth, the 8 comes to the top. So I have the absolute value of 8 over 1, which is 8. So the length of the lattice is 8 units which means when we're dealing with our lattice, the lattice's midpoint is our focus. So if the whole lattice is eight units, you're gonna go four to the right of the lattice, and I'm gonna go four to the left of the lattice, and that gives me a lattice of eight units long. So we use our focus is where we start. We take our value of the lattice, and really you divide by two and go that far to the right, and that far to the left. And then you graph. 
you take from your vertex, you come up and go through the point you found using the lattice. And it's the same idea. Go from your vertex over to the left and go through the point you found using the lattice. And there is the graph of our vertical parabola represented by the equation y equals 1 8 times the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 4. We have our vertex, our focus, the equation of the directrix we found by doing the 1 over 4a, adding and subtracting it, the length of the lattice, and we can graph knowing all of those pieces of information. So let's do another example. Here we have y equals negative 1 8 times the quantity x plus 1 squared plus 3. First thing to check, is this in standard form? Yes, it is. And so that allows me to find my a, my h, and my k values. So a is negative 1 8. h is negative 1. And k is positive 3. Right off the bat, I can see since a is negative, that means this parabola will be opening down for it. And so it's nice to kind of write that down so I can see what's going to be happening. State your vertex, the coordinate hk. So the coordinate negative 1, 3. And then plot it. So negative 1, positive 3. So this is my vertex. Let's label it with a v then. Then when I'm finding my focus and directrix, again, since this is opening down, remember that means your focus will be under, your directrix will be above. I always like to find the 1 over 4a value since one's dealing with adding it and one's dealing with subtracting it. So 1 over 4a, a is negative 1 8, so you have 1 over 4 times negative 1 8, which gives me 1 over negative 1 half. Flip the 2 to the top, that's 2 over negative 1, which is negative 2. So when I'm dealing with this focus, I have my h value, which is negative 1, my k value, which is 3, and I'm adding a negative 2. Well, if you're adding a negative 2, you're really subtracting, and that is why your focus goes down. And so 3 minus 2 is 1, so your focus is the coordinate negative 1, 1. So I go down to there's my focus. We'll put F for the focus. Same idea for the directrix. Y equals your K value, which is 3. And you have minus a negative 2. Well, if you're subtracting a negative, that means you're adding. Hence why your directrix is located above the vertex. So Y equals 5. So I'm going to graph a horizontal line through Y equals 5. And again, let's change the color. So we can see it. And so now I have everything I need except for the actual parabola. I mean, I have my vertex. I have my focus. I have my directrix. Well, now I need the parabola, which is found by finding the length of the lattice. So the lattice is the absolute value of 1 over a units long. So I have the absolute value of 1 over negative 1 8. Well, the 8 flips to the top. And so you have 8 over negative 1, the absolute value of that. So 8 over negative 1 is negative 8. Absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8. So the lattice is 8 units long. The way you use that, again, is you start at your focus. And if I start my focus, the whole lattice is 8. So I go 4 to the right. And I go 4 to the left. That allows me to see two points on my parabola. And so we go from our vertex, come down, and hit the points with a curve we found using the length of the lattice. Now, one thing before we go on to this last example that I want to point out is our 1 over 4a value. This was negative 2. So notice, and I've defined this before as the distance from your vertex to your focus and vertex to the directrix is 1 over 4a. 
So if you find this, I want you to know you don't need to go to the formula. If you know that your distance is 1 over 4a, then go, since it's negative, go down to mark the point, and then use that point to find the coordinates. Go up to draw the line and use the line to find the coordinates. So if you actually learn what does A do, what does H do, what does K do, what's the distance from the vertex focus, if you actually learn those concepts and not rely 100% on the formulas, you can get the answers just from the graph for it. And so let's try this out in example three. Example three is a little bit more complicated. This one is not in our standard form when I look at it. So we have to put it in our standard form. The way we're going to do that is we're going to have to complete the square. So I am going to subtract this 25 fourths so I can get my quadratic and my linear term isolated. So I have y minus 25 fourths equals 1 fourth x squared minus 3 halves x. The next thing I have to do is I cannot complete the square with a leading coefficient that is not 1. So I'm going to have to factor out my leading coefficient. This is more complicated. And I'm going to combine that step and the completing the, st the square step. So what I do is I insert my placeholders. So y minus 25 plus the placeholder to keep it balanced. And what I would do is I'd factor out this 1 fourth. That's going to give me an x squared, which allows me to complete the square. And if I take 3 halves and factor out a 1 fourth from it, that's like taking 3 halves and dividing by 1 fourth. And so if I take 3 halves and I divide by 1 fourth, you flip the fraction and change the multiplication. So then the 2 goes into 4 twice. 3 times 2 is 6. So I get x squared minus 6x. And I have plus the placeholder for when I complete the square. Now let's complete the square. We take half of our b value. So negative 6 divided by 2. And then we square it. So I get negative 3 squared, which is 9. Remember, these are the important numbers we need to see. So the 9 goes here, but you need to remember you're not really adding 9 because this 1 fourth would be distributed to that constant. So 1 fourth times 9 is 9 fourths. So what I do now is I simplify. Negative 25 fourths plus 9 fourths is negative 16 fourths. Negative 16 fourths is a negative 4. So I have y minus 4 equals 1 fourth. Now you completed the square, so you can write it as a perfect square. We squared a negative 3. So then it is an x minus 3 in the parentheses. And now to solve what I would for y, I would add 4 to the other side. So my actual standard form after completing the square, this whole process is y equals 1 fourth times the quantity x minus 3 squared and then plus 4. And from here, I identify my a, my h, and my k values. I see that a is 1 fourth, h is 3, and k is 4. That allows me right away to state my vertex as the coordinate 3, 4. And so I'm going to go to my graph and I'm going to plot that point 3, 4. So there's my vertex. This is vertical. Since A is positive, it's opening up. So mark it with a V. I always like to next go find my 1 over 4a value because that tells me both my focus and my directrix. So let's do the 1 over 4a. If I want to find 1 over 4a, I'm going to have 1 over 4 times 1 fourth, which 4 times 1 fourth is 1. So you have 1 over 1. So 1 over 4a 
is 1. This, I am going to, instead of going right to the formula, I am just going to use some graphing, common sense. Since it's opening up, your focus is above the vertex. And it's above by one unit. So that means I go up from my vertex one unit. Boom, there's my focus. And so what's the coordinate of my focus? 3, 5. I did not need to use the formula because I understand since the graph's opening up, and I know 1 over 4a is the distance from the vertex to the focus, when I find that value, I can just count on the grid. It's so much easier than the formula. It's the same thing with the directrix. The directrix is the opposite direction, one unit. So I would go down one unit, and I would put a horizontal line down one unit. So just graph it. Boom. There you go. Horizontal line. One unit away from the vertex. And I now, and we'll change the color, can say, well, I went down one unit from four. So down from four, one unit is three. So my directrix is located at the line y equals three. I did not need to use the formulas because I understood that the distance from the vertex the focus and the vertex directrix is the same value of one, so I can just count on my graph. Now let's do our lattice. One over a, we take the absolute value of that, so one over one fourth. Flip the four to the top, so you really have four over one, the absolute value of that, which is four. So the length of the lattice is four units. So I start at my focus and I go half that number to the right, so one, two. There's a point on the parabola. Go to the left, one, two. There is another point on the parabola. And then we connect with our vertical parabola. Cross the entire grid, graph with a curve. And there you go. And so this is how you graph vertical parabolas. You find your vertex, you find your focus, you find your directrix, and you use the length of the lattice by starting at the focus and go half that distance to the right and half that distance to the left. I personally think you should really focus on knowing what 1 over 4a represents. Because once you get this number, you can find these points without using the formula just by counting on the graph. And that is a lot easier than having to look at the formula each and every time.